Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Getting to Know You. This week, our guest is Patty Higgins. Patty is everywhere. Uh, you might know her from, um, if you are a child of the school, from recess duty. Uh, if you are receiving um, some of your early sacraments, like First Communion, you might see her part of that. If you're part of our faith formation families, uh, you might see her as a second grade catechist. Um, you do other stuff, Patty. What else do you do? We'll, talk, we'll get it. What's that? I'm a church sacristan. Yeah, yeah. You might see her in church as a sacristan. So uh, uh, Patty is a very familiar uh, uh, face to many people at St. Sebastian's, but we're going to get to know her a little bit more today. So hi, Patty. How are you? Good, Jen. How are you? Good, good, good. We're, um, we were working on the lighting before we started recording, and you're in your pink room right now, which we always joke <laughs> about. When we always joke about when we're on faith. For oh, you're also on faith formation committee. That's yes. Right. There you go. Another one. Whenever we zoom for that, but um, um, thanks so much for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Glad to help. Good. Well, yes, I did need your help, and I appreciated that. Um, hey, tell us a little bit about you. People know you pretty well, but I'm not sure you know how much they know about you personally. Uh, what do you want to share about yourself? Um, those that know me know that I was baptized at that baptismal font at St. Sebastian's. You were baptized at St. Sebastian's. I was baptized at St. Sebastian's. Yes, I grew up in the parish. Do you want to say, do you want to say what year that was? You don't have to. I, I, it's, actually, it's not a problem for me to tell you the year. I will not tell you the day because oh. that's because of a big deal. I, I was baptized there in 1961 because I was born in November. And by the time the baptism came around, it was 62. Okay. Okay. That, that's quite a lot of time in one parish. My parents lived in that house for 50 years. Um, just on the block. You can actually stand on the playground, look north towards um, Lloyd Street, and I can see my parents' old house from there. Really? That, that you grew up in? Yep. Walk to Seb's every day, play it in the street. And then you got, street. Then you got your own house in the neighborhood. Pardon? Then you got your own house in the neighborhood. Um, when we were first married, um, I lived on 51st and North across the street from what is now German immersion or French immersion? It's an immersion. It's an immersion school. Um, from there, we moved down the block to 58th and Vine because I was having a baby and we had no room. Mm. And from there, we moved to Elliott Circle. So yeah, with walking distance of my parents. Why um, was that? A, did you want to be close to your parents? Was that a kind? Con- was that a reason? Um, Part of it, yes. Part of it was my husband grew up in Pittsburgh and to go that route wasn't what we were intending to do necessarily. Um, and this became, we kind of needed a, a place and, you know, we had uh, two kids up here. And so, yeah, it's, and it's convenient. It, it's my, my dad did that to, uh, to all of us. He taught us convenience. We grew up close to the expressway, close to the schools, close to his job to the store so my mother could work and or walk rather you know all of those little pieces what were part of what made me what I am you know if it's convenience it's easy to do you, you don't have to struggle to, to get there necessarily well and if you're, along the way you got it you're so. surrounded by your community I am in a lot of ways in a lot of ways I am so um, okay, so uh, okay, so so we established where you grew up. Tell tell us uh, tell us. I mean, you you do so much of the parish now, but I'm sure that has all grown over time. What, what else have you done in your life? Um, I have five brothers and a sister, so there were seven of us. Okay, uh, the middle child of those and the first girl, which <laughs> kind of taught me how. Not that it was mom necessarily to my siblings. But um, I was the one, go get your brothers, go get your sister, to get your brother, get your brother out from his nap, blah, blah, blah. So I learned those, those parenting skills or that, you yeah. know, those, those taking care skills from, from having to deal with some of that. Um, well, you use a lot of those skills now. I can see that. Well, and yeah, and, and the, the, my family lived across the street from another family. They moved in and their first child was about a year old and I was 10. And they went on to have three more girls. And I babysat for that family for probably a good 25 years. You know, as the girls grew up, I didn't, you know, that kind of a thing. But I watched those children grow up. And that was my one of my very first babysitting jobs. And um, that taught me a lot about 
interacting with people and children and growing up and how you, you know, you treat them, how you, they're people. They're not always little drooling things. They're people and they need to be respected and loved and held and, and reprimanded and, and everything else. So they also drool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, they also, yeah, both ends to the middle, as my dad would say, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's, Interesting too that living in that house as long as we did. That's um, one of my mentors. One of the people that I, I really respected in the faith was um, the woman who lived nor next door to us north. Um, she was at the time a stay-at-home mom, but then her career went to being. Um, she was the Respect Life uh, chairperson for the city of Milwaukee and so on. And she's my confirmation sponsor and um, a wonderful lady that is your sponsor. And then to the other side of us, this family moved in and super, super great, great family. Um, the one daughter stood up in my wedding. Um, my brother and her brother were best friends and my sister and this person are now best friends. So it's really kind of this, like you say, this community, but they, she, the mom um, called me one day and she said, I have a problem and can you help me? I was in fifth grade okay. and I was leading somewhere. So be patient with me. I was in fifth grade. Um, could you please come and help on Sunday mornings? We need someone to take the four-year-olds to the bathroom or help them put their jackets on and da, 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 da. So from fifth grade until I was a <sighs> sophomore in high school, I was a, an aide in the Sunday morning program. I would take the kids to the bathroom. I would watch the room while the teacher went and got paper, or, you know, those types of things. So I, I was involved in the program that way. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Uh, hang on. This, this story gets better, John. Hang on. Okay. Okay. So shortly after that, um, I'm pretty sure I was a junior in high school. They asked if I would, would take another role and I was co-teaching with um, a couple other, of the other girls. And I got sick in there and I wound up having to have surgery and I took a year off. Hmm. Couldn't, it was too much, too many things on my plate. So I stepped aside for a year. And in the meantime, I met my then boyfriend, soon to be husband and had some more surgery. And I went back to the new director and I said, I'm feeling better. I'd love to be able to help. And she said, hey, that'd be great. We really, really, really want to have two teachers in each class. And could you, this one room, they have a teacher who can only come the first and second Tuesdays, Sundays. And we have a, the other one can come the third and the fourth. And, and we would just love to have somebody consistent in the room who knew the kids and knew the routine and you know read the book when they needed to, ha to have somebody read the book. And I said, sure. So in 1985, I became a substitute teacher in the second grade classroom. And the teacher came in and she said, okay, here's my lesson and then, and she didn't come back for the next Sunday. So the then director said to me, would you mind writing up a lesson plan? Here's the book, knock yourself out. So I wrote up a lesson plan and the next teacher who could come in and sub, you know, was we split the class. She said, well, if you already have something, what am I doing here? She did that one class and she never came back. So then it was handed to me, the textbooks and this class list and everything else. I have been subbing in the second grade class since 1985. <laughs> I did not know that was your designation. Yes, yes, yes. And, and they have asked me a couple of times to move up or down and I have politely said no. Um, leading to my faith, Jen, I think it is um, my calling. Mm -hmm. and not to be like the phone didn't ring except for my first neighbor saying could you come and help walk four-year-olds to the bathroom <laughs> um but that's it that's that's my reward I very 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 much feel that my my faith is not at a second grade level mm -hmm. love it being able to work with the second graders I love being able to talk to them about their faith and about what they know and about what they understand and the words that are so big, that big word reconciliation, let's make it smaller so we understand what it means. Let's talk about saying I'm sorry and making even again and, and making things right. Yeah. How do we do that? Well, what's a good way to say I'm sorry to somebody? 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to knock you over. I didn't know I hurt you. Um, say the whole thing. I make the kids on the playground say the whole thing. I, I, you can't do a grumpy I'm sorry. You can't. Mrs. Higgins will not allow a grumpy I'm sorry. And you have to say the whole thing. I'm sorry that I bumped you. I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings. Because that way they, they understand what they're apologizing for. Yeah. You can't just, you know, rah, rah. You, so you, you can't sorry. do a, you can't do a grumpy. I'm sorry. I'm I, I'm hoping that you talk to my son about that. That would be <laughs> send him my way, or I'll catch him at something. Which do you want me to do? <laughs> okay, I just want to I want to go back for a second. You have been subbing in the second grade class. You you've been working with second graders since 1985. Correct. Correct. And you, you didn't take any time off. No. So you were prepared for 40 years almost uh, mm -hmm. all of the all of the children that have gotten their first communion at saint sebastian yes that's incredible yeah you know if, if i were to say a word about you it would be i mean there's lots of good words uh but oh. a, a, a word a word a word is constant uh, or consistent you know you you I, I knew that because um, I've known I knew you before I started the position here. I, I knew you obviously from just being a part of the parish, but I knew when I came on the staff and I started working mm -hmm. in formation, I was like, well, I, I know at least we have Patty. <laughs> <laughs> She's been there long enough to know where they put the mops, John, is, is yeah. the way. Um, and no one, no one told me you were actually uh, uh, subbing, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to find an adequate replacement. I guess. <laughs> but um, so I, I definitely want to talk more about that. But let me just let, let I, I'd like you to articulate a little bit. Why would someone teach second grade for almost thir for 35 years? You called it a calling, but talk about your faith. Why do you feel that is your vocation? You know, I, I think about this every year when I'm asked, do you want to come back and do this? Do you, are you willing to step into these shoes again? Um, I, I, in part, and this is going to sound really selfish of me maybe, but I love the reward. I love seeing those children put their hands out and receive the body of Christ. Yeah. I am so, I stand there as a Eucharistic minister in tears of joy. Literally, I have cried through some, from, from, just joy for these kids receiving their first Eucharist because it just fills me with like, this is, this is the, the, the basis. This is their get start in life and their faith and what they're, what they're going to be going on, hopefully on through, you know, every other sacrament, every marriage, every whatever else in their life that they're going to start here. And I, how maybe did something to help them with that? Yeah. I never really know. Yeah. And until the mother comes to me one time and she said, I got chewed up by my child. And I said, uh oh, yeah, I put my feet on the kneeler and my child turned to me and said, Mrs. Higgins says that's for kneeling, not for standing. And I had to put my feet off the kneeler. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's clear to me you make a big impact on people. But I also just want to point out so what you're saying is you're hogging the position of secondary catechists. Yes. 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 You could, you could say that. You and, could. and this is a call for anybody watching. If you want to come take it from her. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. No, I, I know you've made a big impact on, on students. You've made a big impact on my children. I mean, I, I know that. And I see, I see the way you work and the relationship, the, the confidence you have in what you say, but also um, the trust that the students have in you because you are so present and clearly present much longer than I even realized uh, that, that you've been present. So thank you for your service. Uh, and, and I actually, sincerely, it might not sound like it when I'm talking to them on the playground about get off the gate or put your snow, you know, snow pants on or whatever. But I honestly, sincerely, genuinely love them. They are uh, not just second grade, all of them, all of them. You know, I might have got one of them mad because I told them they couldn't whatever, but it's only because I care. It's only because I want what's best for them. It's only because I think that they in that community, I received it. I had nuns telling me, you can't do that. Or you have, you know, we don't have nuns anymore. I guess I'm, I was told once by a priest, I would make a good nun. Um, 
that I'm I'm fulfilling that obligation too. Maybe is is being the nun to these to these kids. They just need that guidance or or discipline or whatever word you want to use to um to put them on a path. And yeah. consistency maybe is is you know the word I'm looking for. But yeah, I try and be at least present for that and give them you know support. I saw you, I witnessed you um, uh, redirecting a young woman this morning in the, on the playground who was stomping uh, in, the, in the water puddles with her shoes. And you said to her, where are your boots? And she said, they're inside the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, where are your boots? Those would have been great to bring out. <laughs> yes, so next time you come out, put them on your feet. Yeah, yes, exactly. So, so you're helping that way. But you know, it also like, it's not, uh, it's not passing me that that like your whole community, your neighborhood feel that you know all that stuff. It's like you're investing in the community that you've always been a part of. You you're 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 stepping up to the plate and doing what needs to be done to help form the, your your community. But but the reverse of that is true though, John. As as I've spent fifty nine years there, they have been the support for me as well. I can turn to a bunch of people and and cry literally cry on some shoulders i have i have cornered people in church after church and i have literally cried on their shoulders for whatever reason and they've been there to support me yeah. I have lost my husband my two parents and people were bringing food and putting that on my doorstep and what can we do to help and and here's your hug for the day and, and all of those pieces so in i get back what i give i hope that there's some mutual appreciation as well as faith and as well as community and as all, all of those pieces in, in, in what I'm trying to do and what I, and in what I receive. So yes, it is community. It's very, it's very family for me in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. oh. It's clear. I mean, it's, it's obviously personal to you. And uh, I think mutual is a good word that it's probably mutually formed you as much as you have formed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 35 years of second graders, for instance. <laughs> um, so, so that being said, you, you could, you could look at, you could look at uh, first communion preparation for 35 years as um, uh, a, a, enough already, but you, you do so much more at the parish. You're like you said, sacristan, uh, you um, help on the playground. You um, are just present in so many ways. Uh, why be as active as you are? Um, if we took it and put it in the family perspective, mm -hmm. um, I literally grew up taking care of my younger siblings. I grew up babysitting for these families. Being a part of Sebs is like being, it's, it's your family. This is right. And, 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 and everyone has a role in the family. You know, somebody takes care of the dishes. Somebody takes care of vacuuming or whatever. And I, I, she's. Every day of the week, we had something to do for our job. And you couldn't do this until you had your name checked off on the little chart. And, you know, my mother had seven dishwashers and we each had a name and, and that kind of a thing. So, it, and, and, and with that, my family, um, my children call them the uncles from different mothers. We have two of my brother's college friends who sublet my parents' house over the summers because they couldn't go home. So I have these two brothers that are not my brothers, but I can call them in a drop of a hat and either one of them would be on the doorstep with whatever we needed. Um, and that's, that's what my parents taught me as well. And that's part of the community is to open your arms and to welcome. Um, I have my, both my children have friends that are welcome. You know, but the joke is if you know where the Pop-Tarts are, you can stay. Um, and they do because they know where the Pop-Tarts are. So, um, yeah, if you, if you slept on our couch more than twice, your family. So um, that's that's how this works, you know. So so subs is clearly a part of your family, and obviously it was by proximity that you were close to it. But you know, I'd like to give people the opportunity to just talk about what they love about subs too, because because um, because it's clearly a special place. <laughs> Do you want the short version? <laughs> Yes, I do want the shirt. Okay. Because <laughs> I know that people don't like uh, listening to these interviews much longer than a half an hour. So we'll do All the right. version. But we, sure. we'll, have, we'll have an extended cut later. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah. 
for those of you who want the uh, director's so yeah the director's cut right so um cash what do i like about subs um the fact that i can go into every single one of those classrooms every single one of those classrooms, i have been walking the halls of subs <laughs> since i was in first grade and in different capacities, I've been doing it as a student. I've been doing it as a parent when my kids were there, and I was, you know, the room mom for the for the, you know, Fourth of July party or the St. Patrick's Day party or whatever. And now, as as a, an employee there, I walk the halls in that building for a different reason. But I still know where the mop closet is. I can still tell you, you know, what kid got you know sick in that classroom for my class. I can tell you which teachers were in those rooms, and it it. It's those memories, it's those things that hold you, it root you in, in, in those places. And it's really fun to be able to say to the kids, when I was in school here, we had up there in those cat, in, and they're just like floored. First of all, that you would tell that story. Second of all, that you're that old. And hey, you used to be little. <laughs> you went to school here, uh-huh. <laughs> So yeah. I mean, uh, what I hear you saying is uh, uh, Seb's history, Seb's story is your story. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they, they used to have card clubs and my mom would drag me to card clubs and we'd sit in the basement and my dad would watch the football game and my mom and I would be in the church hall making craft things for the boutique or, or we'd go to, you know, bingo night and I'd have to sit there for bingo for, you know, a couple hours or whatever. But it was, it was also teaching me how to be part of that family, how to give back through my mother making me come to do, you know, okay, I got to go because you were dragged and you didn't want to. But like everything else, it, it became what I am now, you know, it, it kind of put that form under me, that basis under me and it, and it taught me to give back and it taught me to be a member of my family and a community and to respect what goes on there. You might not always agree with, with whatever it is or who's, you know, who's in charge, if you will, but this is your family and this is how you respect it and how you work within it. So. Yeah. It's, it's much like how you talk to the kids on the playground. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, my last question for you is, as you think about the future, what do you hope for Patty? Yeah. Um, I hope that for me personally, that, that the kids do understand that I'm there for them and that I'm not there to necessarily be mean, but I try really hard to guide with respect and love and caring and understanding and maybe a little mom voice in there that says, no, you can't leave your socks on the floor. You have to put them on your feet and then put your boots back on. Um, you can't hit, you can't hurt, you can't, you know, that's not the way we behave here. We're, we are a place where God opens his arms to us and lets us in and hugs us and holds us and keeps us warm and protects us from everything that we, we need protecting from. And I'm not God and I don't even practice pretending I'm God anymore. I, I don't, I can't, I, I can't. Um, we figured out I'm also maybe the wrong gender, but um, <laughs> that said, I still want them to know God wants us to be a good person. Jesus wants us to do the best we can. The Holy Spirit is there to help us. Here's how we do it. So I, I hope the kids can take that and carry it on to the future for, for them. That's my hope for them. Um, what I hope for for myself from my faith is that I can still stand there and, and be part of the community and do whatever the community asks of me and do it to the best of my ability. And in turn, there will be a future generation to turn around and go, ah, that's Mrs. Higgins. She needs help in the car. <laughs> we'll go open the door for her and, you know, help her get in the car, whatever that is, that, yeah. that they learn from example, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. well, you, you've given a wonderful example um, and, and, for, and for quite a while too. Uh, when you say you hope to be able to continue to stand with the community, I think um, you you do that well, and you've helped to guide 
generations of, of young people. <laughs> That's right. It's true. Generations. Some, are- some of them have come back and I have been the sacristan to rehearse their weddings. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Not a lot, but like like three or four over the years. That's, a, that's cool. That's exciting. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's walking a faith journey, I think. <laughs> Just a little one. <laughs> Just a little one. Well, Mrs. Higgins, uh, Patty, thank you so much uh, for talking to me uh, and, and sharing a little bit about your story with all of us today. We appreciate the blessing you are to the community and, uh, and please uh, keep it up. <laughs> I will try my best. I've got, <laughs> I've got help. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. All the time. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Jen. Take care. <laughs>